Namo Bhattai, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am uh, discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 108. Title of the Discourses with Moghulana the Guardian, also known as uh, Gopaka Moghulana Sutta. Right? So, in this discourse, basically, there is uh, Ananda, Venerable Ananda, one of the chief disciples of the Buddha, who went up to meet uh, Brahmin Moghulana. Brahmin Moglana, the guardian, and uh, 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 Brahmin Moglana asked uh, uh, Venerable Ananda a question that is there even a single mendicant who has all the same qualities in each and every way as possessed by Master Gautama, the perfected one, the fully awakened Buddha. So Venerable Ananda's response was that no Brahmin there is not, for the blessed one gave rise to the unarisen path, gave birth to the unborn path and explained the unexplained path. He is the knower of the path, discoverer of the path, expert of the path, and now the disciples live following the path. So basically, like uh, Buddha said that Arahant is a person who is free from defilements. So Buddha was also free from defilements. So is the Arahant, any Arahant equal to the Buddha? No, because Buddha had laid down the path which was not there. And Arahants, whoever became Arahants, they became Arahants because they followed the path laid down. So in all the Arahants, Buddha has a special place in terms of uh, laying down the path for uh, everyone so that they can be free from suffering. Okay, then uh, uh, then there is this conversation and Vasakara arrived. Vasakara uh, Brahmin all, uh, was also there. He, he arrived and he asked, is there even a single mendicant who was appointed by Master God? This is important. That he was asked that, is there even a single mendicant who was appointed by Master Gautama saying this one will be your refuge? your refuge when I have passed away, to whom you now turn. That means, did Master Gautama, who who uh, say that once I die, this is the refuge. So, uh, Ananda said, no, there is not. So, uh, he said that, okay, is there some a single, um, some, some senior monk who has been given the power? So, he said, no. So, since you lack refuge, what's the reason for your harmony? So, he asked, since you don't have a refuge, a one single person to go to, what's the refuge? So, uh, Venerable Ananda said, we don't lack a refuge, Brahmin, we have a refuge. The teaching is our refuge. The teaching is our refuge. Uh, so, basically, the Dhamma, the teaching, right? that is our refuge. So, Venerable Ananda explained further that Blessed One, who knows and sees, the Perfected One, Fully Awakened Buddha, laid down training rules and recited the monastic code for the mendicant. So there is a Vinaya code, the monastic code, which the mendicants have to follow. On the day of the Sabbath, all of us who live in dependence on one village district gather together as one. We invite one who has freshly rehearsed the code to recite it. If anyone remembers an offense or transgression while they are reciting, we make them act in line with the teachings and in line with the instructions. It's not the venerables that may make us act, it's the teaching that makes us act. Right? So it's basically we are not driven by some venerable, some senior monk. It's basically our teaching which drives us and as part of our teaching there are certain rules and we, like if there is a mistake, we make a confession. Right? Uh, Master Ananda, then, then he asked, Master Ananda, is there even a single mendicant who you honor, respect, reverate, venerate and rely on? So Venerable Ananda said yes. He said that there are 10 inspiring things uh, uh, explained by the Buddha. Uh, we honor and anyone in whom these 10 things can are found. What are the 10 things? So, Venerable Ananda explains, It's when a mendicant is ethical, restrained in the moral code, conducting themselves well, and seeking arms at suitable places, seeing danger in the slightest fault, they kept the rules they have done. So, they, which are, mendicant has to be ethical, they keep the rules, they are learned, remembering and keeping what they have learned, these teachings are good in the beginning and in the middle, in the end, meaningful, well phrased. They are very learned in such teachings, remembering them, reinforcing them by recitation, mentally scrutinizing them, comprehending them. So that means digging deep into the teachings and implementing them. They are content with robes, arms, food, lodgings. So they do not have a lot of desires or possessions and all. They are content with the arms, food and all that they are getting. They get the four absorptions, that means the blissful, four jhanas, four blissful meditations when they want, without any trouble or difficulty. Then they wield many kinds of psychic powers. I mean, because, see, 
deep in the meditation you get these kind of siddhis right these kind of powers so they have many kinds of psychic powers like multiplying themselves and becoming one again appearing and disappearing then with clear audience that is purified they hear both kinds of sounds human and divine they have that ability then they re recollect many kinds of past lives so these are all traits of fully arhant monks full they are fully free of defilements so and those monks they have these kind of knowledges and basically venerable ananda is saying that those are the monks who are kind of uh, respected so they rec recollect their many past lives then uh, they 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 realize that sentient beings are re beings are reborn according to the deeds they realize the undefiled freedom of heart right which are the three knowledges that buddha got himself when he got enlightened so these are the 10 things explained by the blessed one we honor anyone in whom we see these things okay then there is this thing that uh, uh, uh he said that uh, the brahmin said that uh, Bra buddha praised all kinds of meditation so venerable ananda said no brahmin the buddha did not praise all kinds of meditation nor did he dispraise all kinds of meditation what kind of meditation did he not praise it's when someone's heart is overcome and mired in sexual desire in sensual desire and they don't truly understand the escape from the sensual desire that has risen harboring sensual desire within within they meditate and concentrate and contemplate and ruminate their heart is overcome by the five hindrances ill will dullness restlessness doubt and don't they don't truly see the escape buddha did not praise this kind of a meditation whereby the mind was filled with sensual desire now what would meditation buddha praised then here he is talking talking venerable ananda is talking about the four absorptions that person goes in a secluded place he starts concentration concentrating he gets the first absorption then he gets second third fourth absorption right so this was basically the 108 main main points i have tried to share do please read the discourse the link is there in the description and do share your thoughts and insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya